My name is Kevin Giardini, and I recently graduated from the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth with a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics. In this video, I'd like to take a little time to convey to you how I contain the passion, the drive, and the technical aptitude in order to excel in a career at SpaceX. I'd also like to take some time to explain to you one of the projects I've previously worked on, and what I did, and how I did it. Growing up, I couldn't help but look at the universe as chaotic and overwhelming. However, once I found physics, it seemed perfect, like everything was explainable or predictable. This idea that I was able to explain complex natural phenomenon through mathematics gave me a burning inside which I can't explain. During my freshman year of high school, I attended a lecture by physicist Dr. Michio Kaku, who talked about his new book, Physics of the Impossible. In this book, Dr. Kaku covered topics such as space travel, extraterrestrial life, and perpetual motion machines. Just like Dr. Kaku implied, every monumental physics invention was once considered impossible. This idea of revolutionizing science and technology, specifically human space travel, ultimately solidified my dream of studying physics and beginning a career in launch operations. In college, my inspiration and motivation increased at an exponential rate. I was consumed by the idea of human space travel and being on a team that would send a man to Mars. Year after year I would attend observatory open houses and watch space travel documentaries, dreaming of the day that I would be able to apply myself in the space industry. It had been my lifelong dream to work in the space industry and I will not give up until I attain that goal. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about one of the projects that I have worked on. Over the summer of 2014, I worked as an engineering intern for Raytheon BBN Technologies. During this internship, I worked to develop a way to seismically image underground tunnels. This project, which came as a contract through DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, called for a way to remotely image an underground tunnel, much like these ones which drug cartels use to enter the United States. As you may know, Sonar is a great tool to use while imaging objects in the ocean because it is a consistent medium. However, when applied to the Earth's crust, this imaging practice is faulty due to the scattering of the sound waves off different layers of the crust and small inhomogeneities such as pebbles or rocks. This is because any sound wave could travel the same distance as the ideal wave, but not to the same location. As you will see, this problem will later be rectified by use of seismic migration. The first part of the project was data collection, and utilized an array of triaxial geophones, which are pretty much microphones to use for recording vertical, transverse, and longitudinal ground vibrations. The test array consisted of four rows of 48 geophones, indicated by the pink squares here, and 24 source locations, indicated by the blue squares. At each source location, a metal plate was placed on the ground and hit with a sledgehammer. Once the sledgehammer hit the plate, the geophones began recording at a rate of 2000 Hz. The tunnel can be seen here as the dashed lines intersecting the array at an offset of about 12 meters. In order to not compromise the results of the project, I did not participate in data collection and was not given the location of the tunnel in this diagram. Only the data and the source and receiver locations. Given the data, it was now my task to find the tunnel. For each source location, there were four data files. In order to make for more accurate data, I decided to average these four data files together and apply a high-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 300 Hz to neglect some of the extraneous data. My task was now to find a way to filter out some of the scattering effects from the ground. For this, I decided to apply this equation to the data, which came from Rice University research completed in 2012, entitled filtering deterministic layer effects in imaging. We will refer to this as the scattering filter, whose operator is capital Q. The Rice University research consisted of simulated data and only on small inhomogeneities in the ground, not tunnels. What I was working on was the first practical application of the seismic imaging of an underground tunnel. Given the data, 
I decided to begin by orienting it as a matrix in an offset versus time grid, which makes sense given that that's what the geophones recorded, the time it takes for the wave to get from the source to the receiver. Here, capital D is the M by N data matrix where the ijth entry corresponds to the recorded sample for offset h sub i and time sample t sub j. The offset is the distance between the source and the receiver. You may have noticed that the differentiation in this equation is with respect to offset. Therefore, in order to apply our scattering filter, I had to transform the matrix into an offset versus depth grid. I converted time to depth by using this equation, where C sub zero is the wave propagation speed. I was able to estimate this based on the time of travel of the wave from the source to the receiver. H, again, is the offset and Z is the depth. This gave us the transformed data matrix, D hat, in offset depth space. The position of these data points did not lie along the linear array track, so some interpolation was needed here. Then, it was time to apply my scattering filter Q. The scattering filter requires a total differentiation of the data with respect to offset H. The key part of this step was using spectral differentiation, a high order method, as opposed to using the finite difference approach, which is a low order method. I did this by creating a spectral differentiation matrix, which I then operated on the transformed data matrix D hat. Finally, I again transformed the data back into offset versus time space so that I could seismically migrate the data. Seismic migration is the imaging process where seismic events are relocated to another location in order to effectively image the subsurface object. There are two types of migration, time migration and depth migration. I decided to use depth migration because it would give us an image in offset versus depth space which would help us visualize where the tunnel would be. After applying depth migration to my data matrix, I went back and repeated the process without using our scattering filter as my control test. I then imaged both cases. This is my control test where I did not use the scattering filter. You can see some activity here, but nothing that would resemble a tunnel. This is the image post scattering filter. There it is. At an offset of about 12 meters and a depth of about 2 to 3 meters, the tunnel popped out. I had successfully been the first person to remotely image an underground tunnel. This internship experience was invaluable that it gave me hands-on experience of an engineering and research setting. I was able to see my work make a difference and immediately sent to many of the senior scientists at the company. This was a great experience. However, my dream is to work for the SpaceX team and be a part of groundbreaking and history setting discoveries. I believe that it is passionate people who change the world because they are willing to put in all the work necessary to reach their goals. Well, SpaceX, much like Elon Musk, who also has a degree in physics, I have a passion, and I will not stop until my dream becomes a reality. I am willing to do whatever it takes to become successful at your company. Please give me a chance, and I can guarantee that you will not be disappointed. Please help me to realize my dream. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate your consideration. You can reach me by email at kgardini at umassd.edu or by phone at 774-573-1876. I look forward to hearing from you.